Yo, what's going on? It's Chuck here online and welcome to Averex On Air. This is a new series where I speak to artists and creatives about their fields and their history of the brand. Today's guest, I got Franklin, AKA the King of Trainers. I also have Mia, who is the creative director at Averex, who flew in for one day especially to speak to me. For more Averex On Air, subscribe right now via Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts. Do that for me now, please. Do it for me now, I beg. I'm gassed, but I'm gassed for one reason and one reason only. And I'm going to get to that in a little bit, yeah? I am with Averex, but I've got two guests with me as well, yeah? Franklin, yeah? King of trainers, <laughs> my guy. Yes. Known you for a little bit. Yes. How are you? I'm you all good. right? I'm good. How are good? you? I'm good. Thank you for being here, yeah? Also, Mia, straight from Brooklyn, New York, been with Averex since 1998. Correct. You just came into the country yesterday. Just got here, fresh from New York City. And then leaving tomorrow. Leaving tomorrow. So you've just come here essentially just to speak to me. I'm, I'm taking it as that. I'm here for you. Here for me. All right, so we want to have a conversation about Averex today, yeah? One of the reasons why I'm so gassed is because today is actually the first day in my life that I've got an Averex jacket that actually fits me. Do you know how bad I wanted an Averex jacket at one point? So bad to the point, yeah, I bought an Averex jacket which was too small for me. I couldn't afford it. So I bought like a, a cream one, it was blue. I still got it somewhere, but it was so small, and I'm already small, so you can imagine how small this jacket was, right? It was so small that like when you pull it on, my arms could only be like that. And if, <laughs> if I went like this, the jacket went all the way up here and you could see my forearm. But let me tell you something, I was so dedicated to having an Averix jacket, it was so important to me. So now, I just, can you, can we just take a little moment to... Just take a moment. Yeah? <laughs> this one's cold, isn't it? I love it, man. The classic white, come on. Classic white, and your one in particular, I was looking at this before yes. we started. This is a little number I did for myself custom. It's a little black ostrich jacket. Can I touch it? Sure. It's like triple black. All the logos are blacked out. And yours? Mine is the blue ombre fade limited edition. You know. Limited edition, obviously. You gotta, gotta, you know what I mean, throw that one in. You know what I mean? Let's go into the memory bank a little bit. Like, talk to me from your perspective. Let me start with you, Mia, actually. I mean, you've been with um, Averick since 1998, but I want to go back a little bit before that for you. Like, how was you introduced to Averick? You know, I was doing a lot of street art. I was like break dancing, you know, music, art, all of that. So it was everywhere. Like I've always saw the jackets. I'm not sure I thought as much about it because at that point, like I was really young, but, and I was a girl. So like for me, it was like all the guys that like I hung out with all had Averexes and they were so, like they look cool, but did I ever think I was gonna work on the brand? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. And then all of a sudden, the next thing I know, I'm like at Averex. It, it was a, like a really a true amazing story about like, you know, living the moment. But then once you got to the brand and you started designing it, me and the design team, we didn't really think about like what we were doing. Like we didn't realize like, wow, people really love these jackets. You know, it's like amazing today to hear all these stories. Everyone has an AV story. For me, Averix just became a thing. Part of the reason was like power of cosigns, you know, like seeing Nas wear it, seeing Biggie wear it, seeing Method Man wear it and that as well. And like seeing these guys wearing it, but also like understanding that these were like made with the idea of it being like a war jacket. Like, do you get what I'm saying? So like the power of the cosign has just been so interesting to me, but do you know or have any idea on like, like how that even came about? Like how these guys started to wear it and like how it just, how everyone started to just wear it. Like where did it just, where did it come from? Well, the brand we really was born out of aviation, 1975, right? They were making old war, war world one and two replicas of like war jackets. This, they're basically A2 bombers. That's what they are. So that's like part one and the whole Top Gun story. I mean, they made all the Top Gun jackets for the movie. And then the next thing you know, it, we had the cockpit store mm -hmm. and people were coming in and like, you know, we started making them in red, blue, 
all these A2s and all these colors. Next thing, you know, it was really embraced by the culture, the hip hop community. Personally, for me, I started to see like a lot of the man them wearing it or people that look like me wearing it. Like, what was, would you say that it was people like Nas and people like Method Man and stuff like that, that were almost at the forefront of, of subconsciously pushing this? Definitely. And then the Biggie jacket on Rolling Stone, that just put it over the edge. Biggie wore the jacket, that famous, you know, the Golder jacket, um, that red jacket. And he was photographed in Rolling Stone. And that jacket really, I think, you know, that's when everybody opened that up and they were like, whoa, I have to have this jacket, you know. And the jacket really became a status symbol of, symbol of like, you know, I've made it. I got the Rolex, I got the Averex, got the girl. Yeah, you know, yeah. but like, right? I mean, that was, that was back in the day. I mean, you know, you made it. It was a piece of like showing everyone that like you were big time. It was Nas for me. When I saw Nas, Nas had this, but it was black. It was the black one in it, yeah? In the belly film and I feel like... No, it, was, it, was white. No, it was white. It was white. It was white. Yeah. It was white. It was white. It was white. Yeah. It was white. Oh, I swear. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. But I just always felt like Nas to me was like... He was the coolest, he was just the coolest done to me. Do you get what I'm saying? And like, when I saw him wearing it, and then I saw like someone that lived near me wearing it, I'm like, yo, how did you, like, where did that, how did that come about? Do you understand what I'm saying? For you, what was it for you, my bro? For me, I mean, I was fortunate enough to be in New York in the early 90s, you know, coming from Tottenham, you know, I had to go to, in the summertime, I was always out in New York, staying at my aunt's. So I, I saw a lot of the guys on the streets wearing it, like, you know, they'll have the BMW M3s. And for me, it was like, whoa. So I'll come back to London and, you know, it wasn't like, it wasn't like a, a big thing. It was like, you see one person, he's like, oh, you know that they, they, they got money or whatever. And then for me, I think I bought my first jacket in 90, 96, my first leather jacket in 96, 97. And, um, I was one of the first people in Tottenham to actually buy a jacket because I ain't going to say how a lot of people got their jackets, but I was one of them to buy it. And then that just, it kind of set the college I was at at the time on fire. Like people like, how did you, because I was, I just remember like just seeing people in New York wear it. And I was like, no, if I can get this, if I could just get my hands on this, you know, and only like the people that, were, that was on the streets for me, they had it. And then when I got it, it was just like game over. And even in that jacket that I described, yeah. I mean, I, I had an Averix jacket very later on, but like, I don't know, man. It just felt like there was an element of power. In yeah, you're like a jacket, superhero. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah, like it was, it was like a, a shield, like a coat of arms. Like, yeah, 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 it was, like, yeah, it was, it was, it was something. So like, it's kind of interesting as well when you look at the fact that like, the moment that you might have a certain demographic of people wearing clothing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this real with you as well. I didn't even know that back then Averix was doing other types of clothes, like T-shirts, um, I don't know, like bottoms or jumpers or whatever. I, all I knew about was the jackets and it was all pretty much through music. And so like, it's always been interesting to me about like how music, especially like hip hop culture, drives and pushes fashion. Would you find that earlier on before you started working with Averex that like there was a lot of rappers that were from all different states not just New York that were trying to find their way in like getting this jacket. Absolutely. I mean even from when I started I remember even everyone saying like you know you got the East Coast and the West Coast and we didn't give the same jackets to the East Coast that we gave to the West Coast so um, you know it was basically the whole country wearing the jackets at the time and you know everyone wanted their own color because wow. you, you couldn't you couldn't have the same color oh, on yeah, it's true. right yeah it's true like, you couldn't have the same jacket no yeah. east coast and west coast were rivals at that time was the color thing deeper than just it being just the color was it deeper than just that was there something to it back in the day you know like everyone's got the same thing you just couldn't have the same thing as exactly. someone else it just wasn't cool like it's like you'll get clowned like that's how it was with me like so when i got my jacket People wanted, oh, where did you get your jacket? I never took them to where I got my jacket from. I kept that secret. <laughs> then I came over to the West End. I said, oh, yeah, I got it from this place, knowing I was lying because I didn't want no one to get my jacket. And that's how it was, yeah. yeah. And so, like, in how you split it, like, how did you work out what 
to give to this side and what to give to that side? Well, I mean, the jackets were available everywhere. It's just that when we, any celebrities that we gave, they all wanted to be original, right? And to your point, all the kids wanted to be original. So every jacket we made, we made in like three colorways because we knew like if you got red, your friend, he wasn't going to want the red one. Right. He wanted to be original. And you know, that's the thing with Avis. They all wanted to be seen. You wanted everybody to see you mm. when you had this jacket on and you wanted to be original. Why did you want to start working with Avrex? I think, I mean, I got really with Avrex through a friend, um, a friend of my family. Um, and when I, you know, they told me about it. I went up and met with them and, you know, it was exciting to work there, but I don't think it really hit me until like me and the team started going out all the time and like we had our original jackets on because you know we're protoing jackets we're making designs not every single one sometimes we'd make you know different things for ourselves and then we'd go out and you know you're in the nightclub which by the way you never took your jacket off no matter how <laughs> hot it was right <laughs> it's true yeah. you know everyone had their jacket but no one had seen ours and they'd come over and they'd be like where'd you get that jacket man where'd you where'd you find that and for us it was like Hmm. you know, this is pretty cool. Like, being a designer, you just were living the moment. You were mm. taking that whole, like, the whole, uh, you know, time and, you know, living for designing. It wasn't really thinking about, wow, what these meant. Mm. You know, it, it wasn't, it didn't hit us. I mean, it hits us more now, me and the team, than it did back in the day. Yeah, because, like, you're just kind of in, you're just the in the moment, isn't it? Like, in the you moment. Don't, you don't usually see it until, like, some time goes by and you take some step back and then you sort of have a look. That's when you realise, wow, like, yeah, yeah. This, is what we'll, this is actually what we were doing. This is yeah. what was going on. Did any rapper or any artist or anyone with like high level of notoriety come to you with a specific design and of a jacket that might have been a little bit more difficult to make? I mean, one that comes to mind is Snoop Dogg jacket. I mean, we did this like metallic spray, you know, special. He wanted like tone on tone. Um, you know, it's funny, I did the proto sample, I still have it today. Um, it's like hanging it up in my office and, um, you know, I still look at it thinking, wow, this is, you know, over 20 years old. And it was like the one jacket that we only made one piece just for him. All tone on tone, metallic, silver, really special. And I have, Crazy. and I have like the proto to that sample. So uh, that comes that comes to mind. It's mad. It just, actually some of this brings so much memories back for me, and I think a lot of it was just down to the fact of like just watching heroes wearing it, and like, and then you know some of the people around here like wearing it and stuff. And it wasn't even like I don't know. It felt like with me and my brethren, we were all trying to get it. But I don't know if you and you talk on this a little bit, Franklin, like how it penetrated over here because. For a while, it didn't feel like I was seeing so much people outside of my circle trying to get it, but times were just very different then. I didn't really know what was going on outside of my... I couldn't see what was going on outside of my community too, too much. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I was, I was outside very young, so I was, I was all over the place. Like, I was in South London, everywhere, just looking... Because I was, I was always into fashion, so I was, I was at Knightsbridge looking for places, so I knew all the shops of where they sold Averexes. And sometimes I would pit people against each other based on pricing and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But um, back in the day, it was, it was about uniqueness. It was about, okay, who can get, the, you know, and because I was fortunate to go to the States a lot, I, I went to cockpit and then I'll get other mm -hmm. things. So I've got an Avrex mug, an Avrex umbrella, an Avrex rucksack. Cool. Oh, that's yeah, really I've got, cool. yeah, I've got all of that just, just to, just to mm -hmm. set myself apart. So yeah. one time I was jumping college, I got the rucksack. Everyone's like, oh my God, how did you get the rucksack? You know, I've got a mug. Yeah, I got, I got, oh, yeah, you got I got, I, yeah, I went crazy. My so mum would buy me stuff. Cockpit though? Cockpit was in the state, yeah, it was in yeah, the America, store. the store. And was On that Broadway. like a famous, was that like a famous store? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was the, yeah. Original the original store. store. That Cockpit. sold. On that. Broadway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On Broadway, yeah. And so what, would you just get like bare people that were just like, like bare artists and just people of high notoriety go in there as well. Is, did, is that what made that place famous too? I think that's like what started it. I think like night, Hot 97 was around the block. Okay. And, you know, people, would, a lot of artists would go in there. So I think that's what really started it. But, um, but then, you know, the customs really went straight to like the marketing and PR and right to our office. I didn't even know that you could just get a custom jacket like that. Well, the celebrities did. I mean, we did make celebrity custom jackets all the time. 
Did you get your hands on any? Nah, not no customs. People, people, they sent me. I've got like even to de- like the other day, someone sent me the Dr. Dre custom firm jacket with his name on it, right. and that was like, and he sent me a picture of it. But I never got my hands on any customs now, nah. because the customs, the UK, the UK was a until it like kind of died out in the, the late, is it the late two thousand? Well, you know that's when things started to pop up. But the custom, you couldn't you couldn't just get a custom like that back in the day. Not in the UK anyway. What propelled it? Because like. Obviously, you had that that moment of like some people wearing it, and artists wearing it, and like people that were literally within, let's just say, culture wearing it. But what do you feel like really propelled it to that next level where it was like where the brand was flaming hot? I still go back to the the biggie. You know, I mean, that's like one of our most famous jackets. I mean, that moment. I mean, that's why I brought it up. It's just. I think, I mean, Belly obviously was huge. And then, you know, you've got yeah. Biggie wearing on Rolling Stone. I think from a UK perspective, it was the, like the inception of videos that we would see, like Channel U and, and, you know, when we saw a lot of the guys wear it, like when So Solid started to wear it and stuff. For me, it was more the streets, if I'm honest. But when we started to see Channel U and the guys who were artists from different areas wear it on TV, yeah. um, like locally to London, that's when I think it started to kind of really get up there. Mega Man and them. Yeah. When we talk about So Solid, obviously we talk about like what they did musically at the time and whatever else, yeah. But we probably don't usually talk enough about like the fashion element of what it was that they were doing too. I, I, you know, I've got a story, right? So there was, so not Cockpit, there was another store that was, they used to do the, um, the Dipset jackets. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a picture of it, I'll show you. And I went there in, I think, 03. Oh, 04 and um, I said yo I'm looking for an A-Rex boom boom and he said oh you're from London so he he said oh do you know this guy and it was Mega Man yeah with bags and bags of A-Rex jackets like and they took a picture of him in front of the store and I said oh yeah that's Mega Man boom boom getting excited and stuff and he said yeah man he's, he, he bought he bought out the shop li- literally at the time and I said this on my IG once and he reposted it and he said nah you really not like I was like so then they took a picture I think I'm there was a picture of me. I don't know if the shop's still there, but it's just like he really went in significantly with Averex. Like it's you know, and I, I don't think a lot of people because I was able to travel outside of the UK. Uh, he he definitely set the trend internationally, like for the UK. Was you aware of what was happening here in regards to like? Honestly, no. I mean, you know, we're in New York City, living on the you know, out in the town and designing up in the design room. Like, we had no way, I don't think we really knew how big it was here. I mean, I'm amazed to know. I mean, obviously I found out later on, but at the time, you know, living the moment, just really taking in the city. Was you aware of like how big it was anywhere outside of New York or America? I mean, I had some perspective because I was in the business but it's not until now that I like work with celebrities and I travel and talk to people and get everyone's AV stories now that like I really see how it was like so like worldwide almost. Talk to me a little bit about like the, the process in how the mechanics worked within the company when you started to work with Averick. So obviously you was going there and you was designing stuff like that, but like was it a small team? Was it a big team? Like, what painting a picture of like what was what was going on in that in that space yeah we had a you know i I would say like a medium design team and it really had we had like clothing designers we had um graphic designers because you know there's so much artwork that go into these jackets that we make and we would all sit around come up with the themes every jacket had a theme you know some of it would be like nostalgia things that we were into at the time or some of it would be like um what's happening currently and we would come up with like a storyline like one of the famous ones or anything around money like get the money king casino high roller high roller jacket high roller jacket that's yeah. another really good one so like we had pillars of themes that we loved to design into whether it was something around sports something around like native american something around like gambling okay. and um, then we would come up with that theme start working on the graphics and design you know the lines of the jacket the piping the details what went into the patch sets like um, the medium we used whether it was like chenille or leather 
um, embroidery stitches, and um, you know, that's kind of how it would be created. So this is where, like, obviously I'm hella just naive, because I, I was mad young them times. So I didn't know nothing about no theme, no nothing. Like, I just knew this Averix jacket is just cold. But I'm not thinking that there's any type of theme behind anything, really. I mean, even now, when I look at it, I'm like, it, there's like certain jackets to me that look like you could see had like a sporty element to it. Like a, maybe, I don't know, I don't know, like- The collegiate. Uh, yeah. Like football. football exactly. Yeah. Like had that kind of vibe. And then some that just had like, that had a super army feel to, it, feel to it or whatever. But like, I don't know. I feel like for somebody who like, who was just super young, I didn't even see, I didn't even know. Like we, it was just in our head. These are just the coldest jackets. What would, what would you say were like, if theme wise, were the most popular? Well, Native American Indian. I mean, that was huge, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, also, like I said, like a high roller jacket. Um, you know, we did... Um, the Tuskegee Airmen. Oh yeah, Tuskegee yeah. Airmen. Wait, what's that? Um, That's the... Um, so, you know the, 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 the red and black jacket that Lethal has? Yeah. So it's the one with the airplane. But who has Lethal B? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And the airplane. I wouldn't bring it up, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The airplane. You know, it's got the airplane, it's got the, 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 the pilots on the back. Now, that was a, a pop, really popular jacket, because the, the good thing, I think you guys done it in a lot of different colorways. Yeah, like, and, different and different designs. Different designs, yeah. You know, we'd come out with the red tails. Mm, the red tails, yeah. Red yeah, tails, red that tails. was a really yeah. good what one. What was the red tails? Well, it was, you know, the red tails, like, you know, it had a whole theme of, like, the airplane. Do you remember red tails of the film? Pilots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, there, it all goes back to the first, you know, Native American black pilots. Mm -hmm. So it's a tribute, really, to them. And, um, you know, inside the jackets, they all have, like, lining art that tell the story. Interesting you br bring up Lethal B. I want to bring it here, actually. So, obviously, you had, like, um, Mega Man, Oxide Neutrino, so solid in that, that were like heavily embracing it. And obviously it was like heavily in and amongst street culture. And then grime started to really become a thing. And then you started to see like some of the grime dons wearing the jacket. And it, for me, it felt like the, the guys that I saw in grime that was wearing um, Averex jackets, to me, it was like a symbol of them having a little bit of money. Oh yeah, yeah. you sure. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like them having a little bit of money. And like even that like what contributed to like penetrating culture indeed. a bit, right? Indeed, indeed. I mean, it's like when 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 Ozzy B in in the 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 uh, oi vid, oi, he says, but right through in my Averex, you know, those little lines mm -hmm. was like, you know, I was I was older than them, but I respected it, you know, and I, you know, so it's like for us a lot, the older guys, we were like. Okay, yeah, now the young, they're starting to get money now. Like, trust me, it was not cheap. You know, one of my brethren's, yeah? So he just started uni. He's a bit older than me. He just started uni, yeah? And then obviously he got a student loan. I'm not sure how much money he got at the time. Yeah, you know my spent man his spent loan. on his like jacket. Like half his student loan on, his jacket. on yeah, the jacket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, soon as, the, I, I'll never forget, yeah, we was in his yard. And then he kept saying, oh, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get Averick's jacket, I'm going to get Averick's jacket. And we kept going to Shepherd's Bush. There was a place in yeah. Shepherd's Bush that was selling Averick's jacket. So we used to go there all the time and just window shop. Like literally just window shop, window shop. He's like, yo, as soon as this money lands, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go and get this Averick's jacket. You see that student loan? See when the student loan dropped? We went straight to Shepherd's Bush in the morning. As soon was, as it was opened. global? Was it global? Yes. Yeah, it was global. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Right by the market there. He went in there and spent half of his student loan on on that jacket, it, it was, was so important. It was, oh, it was so but important. It was expensive. That's bad. It was very expensive. Wow. I mean, I, my one was five hundred pound back then, and I had no business spending five hundred pounds right. back then. And five hundred pounds back then was peas. Like it's different now because obviously everyone like yeah. like obviously people are still going through it or whatever. But there's a lot of artists that are making a lot of money. There's a lot of people that are running businesses and doing all kinds of things and like it's just relative, but 500 pounds back then, especially when you're looking at someone who's like 18, 19, 20 and stuff like that, it's crazy. Fast forward in a little bit. So I, Averex had come out of my mind. I wasn't thinking about Averex. It went through a quiet period and we can maybe talk about that actually. But um, one day I was at an event and I saw Lethal B at the event and I saw him wearing a red, Averex jacket. And at first I looked at the front, I said, I said, what jacket is that? He said, it's Averex. I said, is that a throwback? He said, nah, 
He goes, I went back, I went and I, I bought like a few Averex jackets and he started showing me like the Averex jackets that he had bought, yeah. And I was like, oh no. Oh, what, like there's, there's like jackets that are still being sold kind of thing. And he went out, he was telling me that he was looking to go and do it. And ever since then, I'm, doing, I'm not putting it on him, by the way. I'm just saying like ever since then, I feel like now I'm starting to see like a light re resurgence with the, the Averex brand. Before we go into that, I want you to lead into it. Like talk about that, that, qu that quiet period because you've been there since 1998. So you've seen that brand be steaming hot and then you've also seen it like go a little quiet. What changed? Well, I think, you know, we had the peak of like street culture and then, you know, that whole world of like what at the time really I call urban, right? That whole urban and fat, urban fashion really started to decline. It just, fashion was changing. So, you know, all of that, all of those clothes really started to like slow down. And I think, you know, it kind of dissolved. So Averex really went quiet, shut down um, for many, many, many years. And what was you doing in the, in the meantime between that? Me, I was designing, designing for different brands. And, um, and then you came back because it, it was necessary. Well, I knew it was time. The necessary occurred. I knew it was time. In 2017, I was like, it's time to bring the brand back. It's time to, and why though? Like what, what made you feel that way? Like, uh, I was traveling through the UK, traveling through um, all of Europe. And then I went to Asia and I was, you know, going around from Tokyo to um, Hong Kong and Korea. And I just knew I was like because they still have the li they still had the license to produce right back yeah in well Japan, they all right? Japan owns yeah, their own, yeah, yeah. Their own license, yeah so you know you had Japan still making all their great product and they were still making like Abrex yeah, yeah not this style, not style. more dragon the dragon jacket this more, was yeah. this style of you know Avies were really New York style mm. you know at the start I mean and you know the UK really braced it yeah. too but. Um, Japan had its little bit of a different style to a more Americana, more aviator, military feel. Do you feel like the resurgence right now fits the time? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, um, like, because we've we've got a shopping box part shortage now, and uh, people walk past, and it's like, I wish I could just put a camera just on the doorway. Oh my God, Avrix is back! It just feels like people walk past, like shouting, Avrix is back! Like, it's just, it just feels so good. Like, it really does feel so good, like, to just see people's reaction. And then they come in and they're like, oh, I remember this and that. And then, you know, and people literally say, no, nah, I'm gonna, because, because it was so expensive back in the day, right? Mm -hmm. People are now making money enough to actually afford it. So they're like, I'm gonna come back and buy. And lots of people have gone away, come back and said, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna buy my jacket now. Do you get what I mean? And it's, it's just the, the excitement and the feeling they get. It just, it's priceless. What made you like, because you just mentioned that you had a store and I remember you told me this on the pod. Yeah, yeah. I and did, I, was, yeah. I was actually like, I was impressed still because I just thought, okay, that's interesting. Like you, you've opened up a store in um, Shoreditch, Box Park with like Averex jackets and that. Why? What made you? Well, it, no, it was, I mean, it was a conversation with um, Tom, who's like the sales director. And um, I was like, how are, we, how are you going to bring it back? Like, I was so excited. Like he would say, I was so excited. So I was like, okay, maybe we can get a license. I can get. I can get like an account and open it at one of my, say at one of my retro stores. He said, no, no, Frank, why don't we just, just do a store? Like, and I said, okay, cool. So I literally spoke to Box Box over the moon. They were like, let's get it. Like, when is this going to happen? And then it was just like, um, just working with um, the guys and just, just making it all happen at like there. And it, it started off as a pop-up, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it just, it just, it's just, it just went crazy. I mean, we had Biggie Sun down. Biggie's son came down on the first day. Biggie's son? Biggie's son. You ain't seen a picture that I posted? No. Yeah, Notorious Big Son came down on the first day. Like, Swear. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in the country, right? Um, and it was, it was a, a case of being in the right place at the right time. So a, a, a few of his guys came into the store. Um, I knew he was in, I knew he was around in it. So luckily they came at the time that I was there. I said, yo, they said, yo, we got CJ. I said, yeah, bring him in, boom, boom, boom. What, what happened was, was, is we had the original, the, the, the jacket, his dad's jacket, mm -hmm. the original in, the original, in, in store, hanging up. And they said, okay, we're gonna go and get him. He was at Shoreditch House. So, okay, cool. So what I did is I told PJ, who works in the store, put the jacket to the back of the shop. Like, just put it on the back rail. 
And he was like, why, why, why? I said, no, don't worry, someone's coming, it's cool, like, let me, you know. Mm -hmm. So then I see him across the road and he's coming in. So I'm at the door, yo, what's going on? Boom, boom, saying hello to the, the, his peeps. And he's like, yo, Averett. So he's, he's going through, looking, looking, looking. And the jacket's, the last jacket hanging at the end. As soon as he sees that jacket, he's like, yo, oh my God, this is crazy, boom, boom. He said, yo, we gotta do a shoot. So we literally done a whole photo shoot in our shop. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so yeah. it's the pictures, it's the pictures, pictures of him wearing with him, yeah, of him wearing a jacket. That is yeah, insane. and me putting it on him, and he's saying, "You guys done gave him a special one, yeah. right?" You gave I made, him a, uh, we gifted made. him, we made a tribute jacket, a tribute for him. jacket for him. Yeah, I put his initials on one arm, his dad's initials on yeah. the other, and with a beautiful tribute on the inside lining. Yeah, it, it's yeah, it was just such a a moment. So that happened on the first day we opened. I know you talked a little bit about um, designing the jacket for Snoop and stuff, right? But like. I really wanna, want you to paint a picture in a, like a special moment for you working at Averix early on. Like, when, when that comes to mind, what does come to mind when you think about special moments working with, with, with that brand? I think, you know, I think it means more now than it probably did then, only because we, we were all fashion designers, so we thought we were like the coolest thing, to be honest, and we're making these Averix jackets. So we're living like trying to be, you know, cool and famous and fashion designers ourselves. So I don't, I don't know if we were really thinking as hard about it until now when, we, when I see all the um, celebrities and I'm working with them and they tell me some story about a jacket that they had that I worked on then it really hits me and they'll say, oh, I had this jacket and, you know, my mom bought it for me and it meant a lot, but it wasn't real, it wasn't real, it was fake. Yeah. So I never really wore it, but I really appreciated it. So it's like then that, it's now that it hits me to hear this. Is, like, has there been someone that has really surprised you in when they've come to you and said to you, like, you know what, there was a jacket that I got and this is what it meant or this is what it did or this is what someone bought or... Today, you mean when they yeah. tell me the stories? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, everyone. I mean, the game. Like, mm -hmm. we got on the okay. phone with him, yeah. and it's the first thing they say. It's so, it's amazing. Like, the first thing they say, oh, first I would just want to start and say, this is such an honor. It's so amazing to actually be talking to you on the phone because, you know, I always want, wish I could have bought a jacket back in the day, and now, you know, obviously I can have anything I want. And I'm, happy, I'm getting an Averix jacket, and that means so much to me now because they can have anything. Right. And they still want the jacket. Yes. So for me, that's where I get the chills. I'm like, wow, it's amazing to bring these jackets back and, and try and do it all over again. I've owned a lot of different types of jackets, but honestly, like when I came in here today and I was like, obviously I had, you know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, cool. Like I knew I was having this jacket. I knew I was having this jacket, but like something just felt different. When I put the jacket on, something just feels it just feels different. And I think it's got a lot to do with like the nostalgia element to it, but also like what the, what Averix actually really meant to man, like growing up, do you get what I'm saying? Like for you as well, Franklin, like what did it, what did it, what did it mean to you? Um, I love Averix. Like, yeah, everyone knows that. Like when you know me, apart from trainers, they know I love Averix. And it just means so much. Even like working with the brand, I told Tom all the time, like, Thank you, the guys. I'm like, I just wanna, I just wanna do things and just, okay, what, well, you know, I, it, it means the world to me. Mm. Like Averitz is like, but, you know, people don't understand. Like it was, if I can be honest, right? At the time I had Averitz, people were actually getting hurt for their jackets. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, get what I mean? Yeah, like, oh yeah. Do you know, you know, so, and by having an Averitz, people knew that nah, I'm not gonna mess with this guy because he's wearing it confidently in the hood. Wow. Like, do you know what I'm saying? It, it was a different type of feeling, man. It's like, I couldn't even put it in words. I love Averitz, like, I don't think you're gonna find someone that loves Averitz more than me. You know, this was a brand that started, what, 1975 or something like that, right? And like, came from a completely different world to which I could even understand. But I think that penetration of, you know, rappers wearing it all the way up to like, even seeing the Dipset man them wearing it and stuff like that, like, you know, the, all of these things, it, it's like, and it's, you know what's sick as well? Is, and I'm, I'm probably gonna have a conversation with someone about this a little bit later, is that now I feel like there's, the artists here in the UK are now artists that can 
do that penetration now. You get what I'm saying? Like, they're the ones who can make things move. They're the ones who can shift. You know, like when you're seeing like certain collaborations between them and you're seeing like the, like what that does for like the younger generation all just reminds me of what it did for me when I saw, you know, like Method Man wearing it or whatever, or I saw Cameron or Joel Santana wearing it. Do you get what I'm saying? You know, I've got a picture of me when I was 17 wearing my jacket and I've done, I took another picture when I was like 40 so wearing my jacket. The same, and I've still got the jacket. jacket. Yeah, it's, it's up in it's up in the Avex shop. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, my original jacket is up in the Avex shop now. Oh, cool. People come in and they're like, and it's, it weighs a ton. Even this, the, the one that I keep going back to, this small skinny one that mm-hmm. thing, like I remember that feeling quite heavy. Yeah. I remember that feeling quite heavy. This like feels a, like quite a bit lighter. Um, that, that, is that like an evolution change kind of thing? Or no. was there always jackets that was yeah, like Yeah, no, they're, like... they've always been this heavy. I mean, I, we brought back the same skin. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the original tanneries are making the skins. So they're like five pounds. They start, at, the jacket starts at five pounds. Yeah. I think it's just because man's going gym now. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> I think that's got a lot to do with it, to be honest with you. Going forward now, what what have you got in store with Avrex? Like what like what's the move? Well, we we started with the icon, which is what you have on. It comes in like fifteen colors. Mm. Um, so yellow, we yep, we've got classic orange, red, red, blue, um, and you know we're doing fashion colors like you know sea foam green and hunter green, um, pink, Purple. purples. Mm. Yep, and then we've got um, limited edition ones like exotics exotic skins like croc and ostrich and then we do certain techniques like this jacket here which is a dip dye so that's one jacket and now we're also doing a lot of bringing back a lot of the theme jackets coming up with new themes um, I like this jacket because I feel like the icon goes with any of you know the fashion today like every anything that we want to wear you know in like our uniform that we're wearing it just Easy, easy to wear. But I think the theme jackets now, as people all have this icon, they want their own, they want their own special jacket. Mm-hmm. It's like going back to the time, right? Yeah. Where like people are saying, well, what, do you, what else do you have? Do, do you ha- I want something no one else has. Wow. And that's, that's exactly what we want. That's what we hope for. So that we can come out with all specialty jackets and you know, really get that going again, where we can give everyone their own special jacket that will mean something to them yeah it must like when you look back at that you must be very proud of like you know how far that brand's come and also all the things that you've done with that brand and whatnot and even like what it had probably done for your life and I, I know that you say at the time you were just doing it and you weren't really thinking too much about it but like looking back now you must have some really really like fond memories of like of all of that and it must feel so good to do that it does feel good. It, you know, it feels good to just also work with some of the original teammates and, you know, think back. And, you know, we were so young when you think about it, really young. I mean, early 20s, working on these jackets, going out at night. So, I mean, it was the best of what you would want being a designer. You're designing all day, hanging out, coming up with all this great artwork, making protos, trying them on. I mean, how fun is that? And then going out at night. Wearing them. Yeah, in the roasting hot <laughs> club. Exactly, yeah, dancing. Want, but, everyone, but it makes sense. People are looking at it like, yo, what is that? Like, this is cold. Well, listen, I appreciate you, like, giving me some of your time and your insight and stuff like that. I really do appreciate it. Um, I, I am more, like, I'm happy about speaking to you, but I am <laughs> so happy that I've got an Averix jacket that fits and I've got the Icon one. You can't even, I don't even know if you're going to, do you know how many times you're going to see me on my gram wearing this now? Yeah, please. Oh That's my God. Make sure you tag us. Huh? <laughs> Make sure you tag us. bits. <laughs> Franklin, Mia, I no. appreciate you coming back. Thank you. Thank yeah? you. Thank, Thank you so enjoy, much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your time here as well. Love. Thanks for watching everyone. Yeah?